Welcome to Critique Hour. Um, so we will start off with some announcements really, really quickly. Portrait Studio will no longer be on sale after the 31st. So if you want Portrait Studio, now's the time to get it. You can get it on isterac.com on the store um, and it is on sale 50% off. The price won't go back to 90, but it'll be around that range, uh, higher 60s possibly once the sale is over. So if you want it right now, um, it's it's on sale. All my brushes are on sale as well. I use these brushes in, in my class um, and uh, and that's what you see me using all the time if you're wondering what brushes I use. Of course they're on sale because I built them myself and they're custom. I poured my heart and soul into them. And then we've got, uh, if you want to submit your work for critique, you just go to istarac.com, the main page, and click on the little Reddit icon right here, this little guy. And it'll take you to our Reddit where you can post all your stuff. This is where I get most of the stuff I critique in class. And then finally, if you want to join as a patron, you may do so. I just sent out, not just, but a couple weeks ago, sent out the latest assignment for my patrons. That is the pay for Discord with the exclusive content. Um, so pupil, initiate, and apprentice all range from different educational material given back over the year. Uh, but if you want to join as a watcher, it's just $1 a month and it really helps build a, a really strongly backed community uh, to, to promote its longevity for posterity um, and to just keep us strong and independent, not relying too much on marketing or agencies or anything silly like that um, that um, will change the way my content comes out on YouTube. So my hour long videos will probably turn into really short videos if I have to, if my only means is those silly little um, uh, ads that they put and sponsorships and stuff like that. I try not to do sponsorships or anything that silly because it's that's just what it is to me. It's just um, me kind of enforcing a product over you guys unless I use it like, like tablets or really don't do all that, which is why I'm opening this as a door for support from you guys if you want to join that way. It's $12 a year for critique hour. Um, and that's it. Let's get on to the critique. So uh, what I wanted to cover today is just some really, really, uh, it, it's going to be a rough topic for some of you. My uh, flux was on. It's going to be a rough topic for some of you because a lot of you don't like when I talk about tropes. Um, tropes are our friends, okay? Tropes help us make characters believable because we don't all come from, it's not... <clears throat> how do I put this um, in a way where both the mature students and the snowflakes uh, can handle it <laughs> um, you need to remember that uh, in order for a viewer uh, to digest visual content in like a show or media of any kind um, you have to follow and adhere to a certain set of rules oh no she said rules I gotta go break them and hide in my little goblin house well, yeah, if you break them, you're, you're, nobody's going to give a shit about your portfolio. That's the truth, okay? Um, if you're saying, yeah, you're going to get that one commissioner who likes the weird shit you make, good for you. I'm happy for you. I hope you get millions of followers for the weird shit that you draw. But that's not why I'm here. That's not my job. My job is to promote a portfolio that is functional, that is applicable, that let's say you were hired by DreamWorks because of it stuff that you would see on a movie uh, made by DreamWorks. So um, these tropes are very, very important. And when you break them, that's when your work looks uncanny or weird or just plain ugly. Um, and you probably, you're the best, you, you personally, your listener right now, whoever head, who, who's ever head I'm in right now, you personally know yourself and can sense it instinctively when your work looks ugly. It's very, very, I'm, I'm an artist. I've been there. It's not like I'm a non, I'm, I'm an artist too. I've been there. I know when my work looks like shit. So what is it that makes it look silly? One of the biggest things that you guys do is break tropes. Tropes are as follows. I can't go through every single one because there's just so many and they overlap and they have different roles, but to really boil them down, and I mean really, at the risk of offending you, <laughs> there is only... A set number of tropes you can use. Um, here, let me just see if I'm on the right click. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> they all stem from like the same hero kind of gods of Olympus tropes, let's call them. 
So we've got the hero male, hero female, or eh, let me just do hero female. Shorter, bigger booty. Okay, a hero female and Aphrodite female are just sort of um, the same Aphrodite female, I'd say shorter than and more curvaceous. Is that the word curvaceous? Cur cur is it? Is that, is that a word? I really don't know. Okay. So I think hero female should be a little bit less than that. This brack. Oh, of course. I was erasing this whole time. All right. And then when it comes to portraits, there's a set number of tropes too. So this is the male. All right. This can also be male. This is female. And this is female because uh, the circular shape is, is just associated with females because of the curvature, the femininity, the vulnerability, let's say. And these are the tropes. You don't like it, there's a door and there's a knob and you turn the knob, you walk through the door, you close it behind you, please. Okay, <laughs> this just, if you don't like it, leave. Uh, somebody was complaining that I'm not, like I'm, I'm against bi non-binary gender identity. Like, I don't give a rat's ass about who you associate as. I'm sorry, I, I, I don't have the time to keep track of who who's who and who they, who, I don't, I don't, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in character design and storytelling, you have males and you have females sometimes. And that's what we need to make sure that we're uh, representing when we mean to write a male or female character. Um, so if, if, if I'm offending you because I'm, I'm, I'm referring to male and female, please there, use the door. <clears throat> okay. So these tropes also go into more detail. So males, this is going to look really silly, but males have a wider mouth, bigger nose and flatter eyebrows, um, that hang really close to the eyes. Sometimes the male eyes slant downward. Female eyes are, so let's just choose the most feminine shape. Female eyes are larger. Eyebrows are further. Nose is smaller. Mouth is smaller. And you can adjust this however you want. If she's older, if she's got strong cheekbones, if she's hero female, maybe make the eyes a little less slanted. Maybe make the eyebrows a bit thicker if she's hero female. Um, but, uh, that's pretty much it. So when we're looking at a face like this, and now you can see where I'm going with it. <clears throat> and you have enlarged the nose, shrunken the eyes, and you've shrunken the eyes even more by, by damaging kind of what the eyes are supposed to be doing, lowered the eyebrows, um, and the mouth is fine. Um, and then there's just the Cupid's bow, which is another symbol of male faces. Just when we have an excessive excessive size to the cupid's bow, it can read as male really quickly. Male lips, let me go into further detail. As you can see, tropes come in layers. Male lips need to be thinner, and we don't really exaggerate the upper and lower lip in animation, do we? And this is all just a means of animation. Maybe the lower lip is exaggerated because male upper lips don't really happen. Even in real life, next time you look at like a typical male face, and let's not refer to the real world because we have all kinds of lips and eyes and faces, and men can still look very, very handsome with a full set of lips. But we're talking about boiled down, quick read character design, um, which is what you guys need to be focus focusing on, not nuances, stuff that reads right away, stuff that's easy to animate. Female lips tend to look like this in animation. Um, fuller, and some, 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 something more similar to this. So if it was a graph, it would trend more this way and trend more that way if it was a male. So. The main critique of today is that you don't have, you've made, first of all, she looks Asian. Um, she looks like a male because it's just the way that you built the head. I think it's the bone structure, the large bone, upper um, bra bone versus the cheek. This is something accredited to male faces only because the large bra bone, 
business, that whole Neanderthal brow, which is a, wow, I kind of like to tease the males in the audience. We have a larger brow, they have a larger brow for, um, and brow bone above the eye. And the cheekbone kind of sometimes sits underneath. Again, in the real world, sometimes you have guys with really strong cheekbones. But if I sketched a face with really strong cheekbones, doesn't that instantly read as female? Even if in the real world, this was supposed to be a guy. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's about how it reads once it's in lines. And then females tend to have a lower orbit of the forehead um, and brow bone and much circular, man, my lines are not listening, much circular shape, much more circular shape. Okay, and so we end up with a female read. This drawn in a line reads as male, correct? Um, and that's what I'm, again, I'm trying to say is that it, as it reads in lines is how it will read in the eyes of your viewer, the way we ingest and digest this information. So that said, you broke rules, you broke trope. She doesn't read as a, a friggin', um, uh, what's her name? Sleepy McSleeperson from <laughs> Sleeping Beauty, Aurora. Um, and she needs to be corrected so that she reads as female. That's the first and most important rule right now. So let's do that. I'm going to jump into liquify really quick. First of all, this crop is driving me bananas. Um, take care of that. All right. So filter, liquify. Let us fix some of this. So zoomed up, you probably, and there are females who look like this, but you're talking about a Disney character that you've drawn. Right, so instantly that, just lowering the brow bone structure. Brow bone structure um, is really a defining male trait. Um, it's just that low eyebrow business. Right, a, a higher inner eyebrow and a higher arc. She kind of looks like she's, like if I was doing something like this with my arm out, I really would not have such a blank face, but uh, you know, seasoned by all those Final Fantasy characters over time. They all had blank faces. Um, and, you know, we all just got used to the cool guy with a blank face. Uh, but it's it's your canvas, so do more with it. Um, I'm going to enlarge the eyes to the point where I actually need the bloat tool. It's just a full-on scale change. Again, we're talking about a Disney character that you're trying to let read as a Disney character. I'm going to thin out her nose. And because we're not looking from the bottom, we're not looking up at her, there's no reason why her septum should not be lower than, I'm going to exaggerate it, lower than her nose. Even that looks right. Lower than her nostrils, or her nose, yeah. And then there's the, the C shape needed for the lips to read. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and I'm not sure why there is no um, smile or anything, but like, like she should be, you know, like, like something like that. Like, I think that's really elegant. So again, upper lip is enlarged, if not larger than the lower lip. Both lips need to be strong. Okay, so let's compare just the liquify where we were before and where we are now. So I'm just gonna select crop after. Okay, so before, do you see how it reads as male? Kind of like a teenage boy. <clears throat> and we still haven't even finished the painting. Right. After, a little bit more feminine. And then we've got the fact that her eyes are still not big enough to show off most of the pupils, so she looks more awake. So I'm just going to give her a crease, because I know we ain't talking about Mulan. And so that kind of oversized lower eyelid needs to go and just needs to be applied with a shadow. All right, 
For female faces, also the eyes slant down, so don't forget that. And that's probably what this student was doing. They don't think they meant to draw it as Asian, they just wanted to achieve that slant. So, also can't really draw upper lip without um, making sure you've got the laugh lines for it, or the laugh, the laugh um, radial shading. Because radial shading really only sits on the upper lip. Can anyone explain why? Anyone who's um, kind of versed in their radial shading explain why the upper lip needs the radial shading more than the lower lip and then i just need a picture of aurora because i uh sleeping beauty <clears throat> okay so she has a very very caucasian face um really strong cheekbones that go higher or as high as the brow bone. Um, strong nose and really full lips. So it's a longer face as well, really big eyes. So I'm just gonna keep, um, I have to lengthen her face because that's I think why she looks Asian mostly is because she uh, she doesn't have that sharp chin. She has a very, very sharp chin as you can see. I'm not even sure if we are allowed. I'm allowed to have this on my YouTube. <laughs> is this allowed? Am I allowed? The, the neck thickness is also a big giveaway for that male read. She has a stronger cheekbone. So yeah, really sharp chin. Strong chin. Her face, her mouth is pretty far away from the chin, as you can see closer to the nose, which is very, very um, important for female faces. And then we've got the eyes being further apart. Okay, she has a very gentle smile, very simple and um, very strong Cupid's bow dip in her lips, as you can see. So we don't, we try not to overdraw the Cupid's bow bump, because again, that's very, very masculine. And I'm trying to just keep the eyes alert, looking in the same direction, but also still look like her. And she's got a strong lower cheekbone. I think that looks a lot like her now, don't you think? I'm sorry that I'm not, okay, there we go, that's better. Um, but it's just that Asian eye that's not working, so we just have to fix that. And it's it works in a very quick way. I might unsharpen the chin a little bit more, but it works a very quick way to un-Asian an eye. You just have to structure the eyebrow, and that's it. Um, what's happening? Why am I canceled? Because <laughs> of Disney? Uh, and before Disney copyrights our entire lives. I don't think they will because it's fan art. I don't think they'll come after me. Okay, so we're just shadowing here. And then we're just getting some rid of some of these lines. These are just excessive lines. And then, um, so I'm just looking at the picture of Aurora. She's got a really, really strong upper eyelid. And, and Asian eyes don't have much eyelid, uh, so don't really want her to look sleepy, but at the same time, I still want her to 
have that upper eyelid space. And then she's got really strong lashes, really strong black in her lashes. So sometimes we do need to use makeup for that. And you'll see in the before and after why tropes are so important. And I'll try to have time today as well to talk about where the tropes are damaged here. <clears throat> right, so from a distance, this stuff is reading. It looks good. Always zoom out, all right? So yeah, is it because the lower edge of the cylinder is descending onto a trench away from the light, whereas the lower lip has the light hitting the top of it? Exactly, Becky. So the lower lip, so the cylinder of the upper lip Oops, worst color imaginable I could have chosen. Um, is this way. Right? So that's why really radial shading happens here because any radial shading, which does happen, because there's muscles all around, the lower lip cancels them out because it, it looks up at the light. So good answer, Becky. Um, and then let's just finish off by using a universal value. I talked about it last class. Just go to the previous critique hour and you'll know why I'm using white. Obviously I'm using it with a really soft brush, soft brush, and I'm using it in layers. That's because I'm trying to unify the skin under one light source. Please don't forget this trick for realistic skin. Use white, that's the light source reflecting on the sheen of the skin. Ya yeah, noobs. Right. And then I don't think they used one, but I'm just gonna throw it in. Um, just a glitter in the eye, glimmer. I'm gonna have to flip this and just make sure that everything is in order. And squinting the eyes, as I've talked before in the last, I think two critique hours ago, talking about expression, is a really great way to just bring charm and action and activity up into the upper eye. Um, though it's not visible from a distance because we're just talking portraiture, I'm just going to use the redness in the waterline. Alright, and then just sneak in some light over here. Oh, she looks so cute. And in the picture, she's actually, her skin tone is not so much olive as it is just Caucasian. So I'm going to try to shift the skin tone to a little bit more pink so that the lips read as pink. I think you did the hair wrong as well. You completely did the hair wrong, possibly because it was a little intimidating to try the swirl in Aurora's um, hair. That's a very um, like signature, sw signature swirl. <laughs> All right, and I'm just going to blend this out. The, I know you're trying to reflect the pink in the face, but it's just, um, you've pretty much thrown off the core shadow and thrown off the skin with it. I don't think um, the environment or this pink is that close. It should be just a soft brush application. And I'm going to just try to get rid of this patchwork that you have all over. And that just comes from you looking at your painting while you're painting it and you're just satisfied with how it looks, the patchy skin. Um, please blend objectively, not subjectively, because texture is objective. It's not up to you whether or not skin is soft. Um, skin is soft. And when you're breaking objective rules about texture behavior, that's when you start bordering on abstract. And at that point, you're not really painting realistically anymore, so your characters are not real. They're not, they can't be taken as real. I'm just trying to show off where the temple starts. And then I'm gonna just choose one of these colors. Eyebrows are desaturated. Does anyone know why eyebrows are desaturated? We don't use reddish browns and eyebrows. Whenever you go buy an eyebrow pencil, if you're a girl, you're not going to choose one that's got red tones in it. I don't think they even make them like that. Um, you choose ones that are a little bit more cool. All right, and we still don't have a lower lash line. 
just made one of those and then zoomed out I'll be able to tell exactly how much to use and with my soft brush I'm just going to create a haze for the lashes right and just do that and then we've got a little bit of light on the lower eyelid and then of course there's that signature inner eyelid, eyelid glimmer for the Aphrodite so excuse me so um if you were to choose which trope because there's there's more tropes there's the mama trope mommy you know the hefty mama you know but you can also use the hefty mama body combine it with some legs and you'll have an axe wielding um pigtail having scottish <laughs> and she can have a beautiful face too do you see what i'm saying um uh she probably has crazy hair she's got some viking things that make no sense culturally <laughs> um so do you see like you don't have to follow them they, they overlap but she still sits under heft <laughs> okay she's still got the heft so you have to follow these rules but Af aphrodite trope the basic disney princess trope is where aurora is right now all right this Disney trope, where all of them are, Elsa and whoever the fuck else. Uh, so they make reddish eyebrow pencils, but they are for people with red hair. There you go. Uh, but eyebrows are um, eyebrows are thin and therefore have less opacity. You know, I know, but it makes the eye look like a soup socket. Uh, so the eyebrows are desaturated because there is hair and hair when it occupies an area in the skin desaturates it because there's less blood I guess um, so that's why when we shave our beards we get like a green haze that's just the hair under the skin throwing off the skin tone if we really plucked the hair um, right out of its root we would not get that green haze so girls always wax okay <laughs> um, Kind of looks like my friend Kat. That's so funny. I always draw shit that looks like her. Um, and then I'm just trying to finish up with the face, but it's that's really what the lesson is today. It's all about the faces and tropes. Anyway, um, not many dam, not much damage uh, when it comes to the armpit is a little bit too low. When it comes to the body, apart from what what's happening with the hand, um, so. I think you're trying to create this crazy action, you know, you're trying to make it look really cool, but it's too late to do that. It's too late. Bad news, too late to try that. Um, because what you're trying to pull off here is a high action character, standing character design when all you have is a low action closed standing design. Um, meaning the best way you can come out of this and salvage what you've done is to um, is to just lower the arm and trying not and try not to force this high action with just one limb. All right, one limb is not going to make up for a relaxed hand, relaxed legs, uh, standing. It's a cute little lean. I mean, you had something going on here, so you really did not need to. You know, you shouldn't feel the need to do that. Um, so in this layer, I'll start uh, patching it up. And then there's just the hair, the cloak. You've made a lot of mistakes, and most of these mistakes are not always going to be linked back to um, tropes. You know, some of them are just bad texture. You could have looked up on Google <laughs> a flowing cape and would have done a much better job. Even if you hadn't fully copied the reference, you would have come out with a much better cloak than, um, than, than this, right? So this is just a big piece of thing that is as, as large as she is in the thumbnail and it's just eating up the, the, the composition. Really, you don't need it because, I mean, because you were probably saying, well, it's just gonna be a Disney princess in her dress. I really wanted to do something else. And I get that, but um, you really didn't need to make it that big or that boring and if it's going to be that big put some effort it's huge it's taking up the canvas and there's not a single fold i can track down i mean there's this but it's not i mean somewhat there 
but at this size there's not a single there's not a single fold that is defined no fix it all right so now I guess we don't have to deal with that awkward armpit and uh, All right, so we're just gonna merge that down, get that arm back and call this one done. And then I'll show you the before. And you'll see what I mean. Um, and honestly, you were copying a Disney princess, but you just had to look up the Disney princess. And you need to work on picking up references, homie. You need to start looking at references. What the hell is happening with this hand? Did you guess your way through the hand? I'm not even gonna bother because I'm not a very good <laughs> good at hands. I'm one to talk, but seriously, at least I look up references when I try to paint a hand. All right, it's good to laugh. It helps us move forward and move on from our paintings and try something else. All right, so I'm gonna finish up here as well. And um, then obviously I'm just gonna smudge a little bit so it's not too patchy. You could have done more with the hair and the hair seems to be getting longer the further it gets away from her. The hair, hair will look shorter as it flows away from the head, especially the hairs that source on the other side of the head. So to make the hair look three dimensional, you just had to shorten it because these hairs lead back this way. These look longer because they're on this side. Those look shorter because they're on the other side. So the hair being that long on that side, that was just flat. Didn't look realistic, right? So you're losing a lot of her silhouette, which is really great. With this cape, and I just want to show it to you without it. <clears throat> Honestly, how in anybody's right mind would they think that I'm attacking like a gender group or something like that? Like, well, why would I attack? I'm trying to teach you guys how to draw males and females for your characters. Why would I? Why would you assume that I am actually attacking? I have so many gay friends. <laughs> and I have no problem with them being gay, you know? And these people just love perpetuating. They just love it. Oh, I'm going to cancel you. Yeah, you can keep trying. I mean, you could try to cancel me. I give you that. You can try. We all have goals in life. We don't always achieve them. But you can try to cancel me. I'm way too woke to be canceled. I'm not stupid enough to go on and do something that misguided as to, you know, and I don't even have those sympathies. So it's just really weird. I'm out here trying to teach people and they go and make a post on Reddit. I can no longer be here because this Jabrak has voiced her opinion that non-binary people are better and valid. Anyway, um, so here we have some sheen and I'm being really sporadic with the dodge tool because I want it to feel like it's made of that. What's this chiffon? Is that what it is? Katie probably knows. Katie knows all this fancy dress stuff. I like painting those dresses. What is this dress? And, um, And so we need that because in order for this to work, in order for this texture to be visible, it has to glow. I mean, it has to um, reflect this much. But I want to be very picky because this dress has fold. So I'm going to copy and paste the old uh, non-dodged version. And I'm going to, um, because people are so sensitive now, <laughs> you will be canceled. Okay. Um, no capes, exactly. Everything is a gender attack these days. Eh, I mean, they're, they're gonna shut up any, sometime soon. 
Do you guys remember when I said on stream that people are so bored, they're just trying to find anything to, to feel offended, and we really need a, like a universal international calamity to come hit us <laughs> in order for us to gain some perspective, and fucking corona hits us? I swear I predicted it. I predicted corona, man. Uh, satin. Okay, satin. Alright. So I'm just um, going to do it before I actually go in. Do you guys remember what I did with the skin? I got I used a white. The white on the dress is the same white on the skin. So I have to make sure my dodge tool didn't bring in new colors on the dress. It's got to be pretty white wherever there's shine. That's the secret to making realistic texture. Always make sure that your dodge tool or your white shine that's coming from a real white light source is actually white. No, not a light pink, just white, wherever we have reflection. All right, um, so I'm gonna copy, paste before I do all the dodge tooling. And I'm just gonna delete like right here, see where that little bit of the chest goes this way. That's part of the three dimensions. You don't wanna go past that, that's why I deleted it. It's stuff like this that makes the difference, makes you look pro. So before, sorry, before, after. You see, this is the shit. This is where all of the, 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 the added, this is the little stuff I refer to sometimes that makes the biggest difference. Um, there's other stuff that I have a problem with, like, uh, for instance, select inverse. Like the dress gets a bit dark on the, on the light side. It should be pretty light on the light side. It shouldn't really be getting dark. But sometimes you've got dresses that are made of this weird material that do get dark. And that, I get, I get it. Um, you've got this really cool purpley reflection color here, which I like very, very much. And I'm going to use it as the diffusion color on the far side of the dress. Maybe that's just the dress. It's inside the dress's fabric. And you have the, 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 you know, the option of using that pink everywhere, that purple as the diffusion color. Or you can skip this purple diffusion color and just make it all the background gray, which actually will unite her with her environment. See that? But this is wrong because I need to go back and make sure I delete. Remember that little trick I do with the deleting? So I have to make sure that the the knee, where the knee comes out, it actually stops the bounce light. But I gotta get a new layer for that because then I'm just deleting the stuff on this layer. And that's just the gray that I've used on top. And you can use it on the hair as well, wherever the hair is pointing down at the ground, that bounce light moves back up. See how much more three-dimensional she looks? So we're gonna merge down, go to before I did all of that. So that is over here somewhere, I think. Okay. Yeah, it's right here. And I'm going to merge that down. And remember that little deleting tool I did. Just wherever the knee sticks out, stopping the bounce light from moving forward. I was once a victim of Estorac's tyranny. And I witnessed as direct myself disqualify my identity in her community. <laughs> I have no life and I have nothing left really to do today. So I decided to cancel Estabrak and her entire channel. <laughs> I hope it snowballs. I'm going to go and report this to all six of my Twitter followers. <laughs> <laughs> and reveal to them that Istabrak does not like gay people. Okay there, buddy. And um, and then we have just a little bit of a weird bump 
happening here? <laughs> Weezing. <laughs> right, I love gay people, all right? They're just as 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 stark and just as frank as I am. <laughs> and I think they're really easy to talk to because they've they've gone through really you know, some of them have gone through some really horrible stuff. So for me, from my background and the stuff I've had to go through, I think it's so much easier to talk to a gay person than a straight person. <laughs> You, you happy people, you people with good childhoods, you, you, you go hang out over there. I think the people I've had the best friendships with are people who've gone through stuff, um, too. And it's so stupid when someone comes at me like that, like, you fucking gay hater. And I'm just, I'm just over here actually chilling with a gay friend. And I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? And I know binary, whatever is not gay, but it's like LG, LGBTQ, all that business. Um. So I, so I added some folds, which I think we can leave alone because I think they look good. And then this part has no shadow. So I'm going to try to just throw in a shadow really quickly. And I promise we'll be done with this one and we'll move on. Um, and then of course there's like some of the white that could hit the far. Uh, I don't know why lasso works sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't. <clears throat> Maybe that's a bit too much white. I should have zoomed out. Always zoom out, boys and girls. And then um, I think that's it. I'm going to leave it alone because I just don't really, I'm not, oh, I stay back. please stop. <laughs> I'm just adding a little bit of sheen on the hair because it just has none. And then remember, whenever we have something reflective and there's a white light falling on it, we desaturate the white light or else it looks off. Okay, um, so let's compare to where we were before. But before I do that, there's just a bit too much shadow here. The hand can just be like, you know, really elegant. with like a small little thumb sticking out. And that is as much hand as I'm gonna paint today. Do not <laughs> it looks like a fucking dog penis. Um, all right, before, do you guys see what I'm saying? It was just straight up male. All right, and we're talking about her, okay? So before. And it's just the forehead. It really is. That's what... There's females who look like this, but the nose is pretty big. And all that. <coughs> uh, it's about anatomy, not gender. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, my art is not a hobby since I already accepted it through the Royal Art School. Since I'm already accepted at the Royal School of Arts in Denmark. Mm-hmm. Um, I do agree with you on that. It's not really my problem. I don't want people to hide behind dumb excuses on making characters at all. Uh, you need to understand the two sides of the gender trope spectrum in order to take characters are. Um, having gay friends does not allow a person to promote two stern gender traits, especially physical traits. It's fine to proclaim that I'll exploit gender traits to make my character read easier. Um, exploit? I, I really don't think... Uh, exploit is what we are doing when we're revealing anatomy that is in the world, biology that is in the world. Um, I think um, this person is not understanding, trying to gaslight, better just to silence them at this point because they, they, they just went right over their head. <clears throat> um, and this is something I pride us back on teaching people, but I still worry some to make genders too boxed in uh no it the before and after is right in front of you wait wait don't ban kristen just yet um not ban but like silence um this this is not about boxed in this is about straight up mistakes these are mistakes wrong right that's it just like the like there's black and white that's the difference in wrong and right today this is a male face if you had tried to apply 
to be to the for the next character design lead artist or whatever obviously it's on seniority but if you applied as a starting artist at disney for their next live action i don't know animated disney character with a female lead they would not <laughs> accept you were before as a female, uh, a realistic version of a female Disney character. Period. All right, period. So, um, damn, it looks just like Cat. Okay, uh, so, um, what's interesting is right now game studios want masculine looking women. And before and after looks like anger and happy face. Um, I find it worry uh, some to explain harshly to your students that there's only one way to create characters well we expected this right we expected some ignorance in the audience um i can't go for 100 percent support all the time obviously uh there's some people who will not uh understand what i'm saying um i guess they just they just need to grow up i guess they just need some mileage and experience there is a point where you can st I, I literally drew a fat mama uh, friggin viking girl right over here we we overlapped so much small legs like you do with men big body like you do with men and females that are larger and small head we, we literally used male characters for that female uh, berserker axe wielding character from earlier um it's not what i'm saying to you right now and you can probably understand my frustration <laughs> But uh, but I let your life teach you the rest. I cannot sit here and try to adjust. The crown also needs some, I just realized, the crown also needs some highlight to it. Uh, before, you can also look at the, it's just the man in a dress, really, at this point. <clears throat> in order for your work to read, you must follow the tropes, period. Especially if you're basing it off existing cartoon characters, for the love of God. Uh, let us move forward. Okay, I'm going to look up a, a picture cute toddler girl all right um images just so we can there we go perfect result just so we can compare what you've done here <clears throat> you've taken this exact proportion almost so you still have this circular forehead all right you've demonized the eyes but you've given a basic toddler head boobs that's why this red is uncanny. <clears throat> um, all right, I'm just gonna, I'm not, there's no debate anymore. Um, so unless you're gonna change the subject, we're not, we're not, we're not, I'm not gonna sit here debating this with you. There was a before and after. And there was concrete differences. You want to do, do your thing, man. Do your thing. Uh, go to your Royal Academy of Umbrella Academy. I don't know where the fuck you're going. Go there. Have fun. Enjoy. And then you're going to be taught this by someone else if it's a good school. Um, so, so this is the issue here. Um, that you're using basically a size. It's not just about the shape of the head. Use your brain a little bit. Look at the, look at the, the the back of the head compared to the shoulders. It's pretty close, right? It's not just the the shape of the head. It's scale. All right. So let's. This is why I have to talk like this now because I don't want to. I want to make sure I'm understood. We're using the wrong head scale size to body, meaning baby bodies are small. Baby heads are huge. That's why they're cute. That's why puppies are cute because their heads are so huge and they're little bodies and their little tails um so this is this is a scale matter as well as a shape matter um and you're talking about a slinky snaky blood covered creature um and, and she, but she's got boobs so it just doesn't make sense if she was supposed to be a baby like vampire interview with a vampire girl trapped in a woman's body woman trapped in a girl's body um, you know, that's different, but she should, she, she still should not have boobs. Let's just say that and stumbling all over my words here. All right. This makes more sense scale wise. Again, we're talking about tropes, 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 tropes. I'm going to keep saying that until it sinks in tropes, tropes. All right. And 
I literally went through my entire roundabout life to bring you this information just so you don't have to go all the way to the ends of the earth to hell and back to come back with this information and learn it yourselves. I'm literally telling you guys shit I picked up on my way through through heaven and earth to get to this point. Um, and hell. Okay? So just, just believe me when I tell you you shouldn't stick a toddler's head on a body with double D's. It's just... <laughs> Um, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, and then I'm just gonna kind of meet the rest of the body here. No, it's not okay to keep that conversation open. No, it is not. Not open. Closed for business. It's not open. All right? The conversation is not open. <clears throat> all right? The reason why it's not open is because the, <laughs> the conversation open means that a student will think this is okay. It's not. All right? And a conversation open will, will, will make a student think, this is okay, and it's <laughs> So let's just let's just try our best to stay focused, okay? So one of some of the fixes you need to do um, is uh, is just lengthen the head. I love how people are taking this in the direction of gender, where you know tropes also help you align ages. Do you guys see what I'm saying? This wasn't about gender in this critique, was it, Kristen? It was not. It was about how tropes help us make things read, period. So it was not about gender. It was not about this and that. It was not about male, female only. Of course, some of it is. Tropes need that clear read. It's about age groups, also students making mistakes with age groups, like the artists who did this. If they join us on the chat after the video is public, uh, published, if they could, you know, describe their experience with this critique hour and what they, th after showing them a picture of a toddler, tropes come from the real world and tropes help us align all kinds of stuff and make them read. So, you know, it's, it's not damaging. I'm improving your design. I'm not damaging your design, nor am I freaking attacking someone's civil rights. You guys need to fucking lighten up and wake up a little bit. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> all right and i'm just tucking this in I'm lengthening her face that's the characteristic of someone who's grown up and you just have to see the before and after tropes align ages they align genders so that they read per the character required for the story at hand all right i'm not going to talk about this design i'm not going to talk about your choice of clothing i'm not going to talk about how the i mean i will talk about that at least how the, this breast seems to be missing. She has one boob, but the other boob is missing. In order to make the other boob present, we have to show how it's also affecting the fabric. Now she has both boobs. Okay. One boob, both boobs. And then if you want the before and after, if you guys are ready for it. Before. And if you're going for anime, at this point, it's not anime because you've, you've, you're not using anime at all. And after her eyes are still big, you still have that Aphrodite body. And, um, yeah. <clears throat> Let's consider that Isterbeck takes the time to teach us how to do things properly. She's trying to help us grow as artists on her own time. Um... Thank you, Cora. Uh, wait, I wasn't here when she mentioned troops. Tropes, what is it? <laughs> it's troops, uh, Raivu. Tro tropes? Troops. Um, did I just say it's troops? It's tropes. I'm oh, sorry. I'm kind of, uh, my brain is overheating from the anger. Tropes are, I'm going to post this video, but tropes, uh, so you can catch it, Aisha, but tropes are just pre- designated templates that help characters read better. You know, like the strong man, the beautiful female, the fat mom. Um, those are all things we've seen in Disney. Like for instance, when they made the mom, the fairy godmother in Cinderella, 
<clears throat> okay, they use this ba very basic mommy trope, mommy body, all right? All right, so she's bigger, she's got bigger boobs, you know, she's a grandma body. Short, no neckline, larger. So this is this, but this body can also be used. Uh, what's the name of the um, Jotun game girl? Uh, where is she? There she is. That's exactly what I sketched. <laughs> what the hell? That's exactly what I sketched. I mean, I barely played the game. I've just seen some of it. Um, but there you go. Big hefty body, not much curvature. Basically, you can use this body for a male without the breasts. Really big breasts, just like the uh, fairy godmother. But you still got a very pretty face. Um, and that's it. Oh, yeah, I remember this monster. All right. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I hope that today's class was, you know, revealed to you some of you, some of your issues, you guys. So before, after... And then um, before, after, and I'll just zoom up on Cat's face. Before, after. I'm serious. You guys need to, <laughs> you guys need to see my friend Cat's face. It's basically her. Um. Oh yeah, I love this game. The first boss there too. Her body type, uh, like a war mother. Yeah, fertility goddess. Yep. So mother, big body, fertility goddess. There you go. So thank you everyone for joining today. I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for all the love and support. Um, I'll see you guys hopefully this Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. If you learned something today and would like to give back to the community, please join as a watcher. And thank you to everyone who did answer the call and joined as a dollar watcher. You guys are the best. I hope to get all of us on board. Um, it's just a dollar a month. Um, I hope that is, you know, a, a enough for us to just stay away from from all of these agencies and all of this marketing and all this hodgepodge of of making money online through ads i think it's really gross and it, it affects channels negatively because it forces channels content and that's something i don't like to do so being able to do this with you guys today at this length um being able to teach you as i need to teach you without pandering um and without uh, uh kind of uh, mincing my words or whatever it is, swearing as much as I need to, um, is is I can do all this because I'm not tied to any market or, sp or sponsorship or anything like that. I can say whatever the hell I want. Um, so <clears throat> obviously what I'm saying is not um, gonna damage, it's not harassing, it's not anything like that. But um, the point is that I'm keeping my class as true to me. And the only way to do that is through your support. So if you guys wanna support, you can join us on, on uh, What's, what's this called? Patreon. Um, there is a free Discord if you guys want a non-toxic, friendly environment uh, where everybody just hangs out and talks and chills and games sometimes. Um, message me on Facebook to get an invite to that Discord. I'm accepting invites right now. Um, and uh, if you want to join, there's another Discord, a private, exclusive, Patreon-related Discord. Those two Discords are not the same. One is a private, both are private. One is free, one is not. One is obviously linked to Patreon and rewards and all of that and supports me directly. And then one is just the one I've always had open. Rules are the same as the rules of conduct on Discord. Anything that breaks those rules, um, it results in a kick from my community, <clears throat> from my, uh, from everything. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on Thursday at 5 p.m. You're very welcome for all of you sweethearts who are um, you know, sending out messages of support right now. Really appreciate it, though I don't reply to every single one. I read every single one, I promise. All right, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Bye.